Hey, happy Sunday, Grace Life family. So I was having a conversation on Friday with one of the people that I mentor. And as I was having the conversation, I got to the point of the importance of being healthy in your soul. And I just kind of asked the question, you know, you know that there's three parts of you, right? And, you know, you are a spirit, you possess a soul, you live in a body. And this particular person was like, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not tracking. I was like, oh, okay. All right. Well, <laughs> let me take the moment to kind of walk you through this. So I had a conversation with the person, helped them really kind of understand how God works. The way God works is you have to make this change on the inside before it can manifest on the outside. A, a lot of times people are, are seeking for something externally, but it will not manifest until they make that change internally. And so I was led this morning to share uh, this message entitled, The Importance of a Prosperous Soul. As a believer, your focus should be your singular focus, actually. There's three parts of you, but you should be focused on the salvation of your soul or the transformation of your soul. Now, the notes for everything I'm about to share is available to those on the Patreon. Um, <clears throat> and so if you're interested in the Patreon, go to patreon.com forward slash Rick Pena. I'm putting out a lot of this content on that forum. And I also give that forum access to all my notes and a lot of different things. Isabella and I are doing things together there. All right. So let me just talk about the importance of a prosperous soul. For those of you that may not know, a lot of you have heard me teach on this before and you've heard others teach on it as well. But just in case, let me get this out of the way. You are a tripartite being, right? There's three aspects of you and three facets of you. And just like God is God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit, you are spirit, soul, and body. In 1 Thessalonians 5 and 23, uh, the Bible says, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So there's three parts of you. There's a spirit, soul, and body. Now your spirit is the real you. Your spirit is what's going to live forever in one or two places. The, your spirit is the real, you are a spirit and you possess a soul, which I'm going to talk about on this video. And then your spirit and your soul live in a body. Now, when you got born again, if you're born again, the only thing that changed in you was your spirit. Your spirit was changed instantly. It happened when God's spirit, because you were born without the Holy Spirit, so the moment you got born again, God's spirit, the Bible says, bears witness with our spirit. This is Romans 8 and 16, testifying that we are children of God. So God's spirit came in and recreated your spirit. So now your spirit was changed instantly. You have this recreated spirit on the inside. And once you're born again, that recreated spirit is going to live forever with Jesus. You will, you will forever be with the Lord when you die. When you walk out of this body, you will forever be with the Lord. Now, that happened instantly. Say instantly. Now, your soul, while your spirit was changed instantly, your soul, which is what I'm the whole point of this video, is being changed progressively, right? So that's what I'm going to talk about today. And then eventually, your, your body will be changed eventually. So there's three parts of you, spirit, soul, body. Your spirit was changed instantly. Your body will be changed eventually, like one glad morning in the twinkling of, of an eye, right? <laughs> you, you, you'll get a, a glorified body. The dead in Christ will rise, and then you'll have a glorified body. You will forever be with the Lord. So you have that. So my spirit was changed instantly. My body will be changed eventually. My focus right now is the salvation of my soul. My soul is being changed progressively. Now, how do I change? My, what is my soul? My soul is comprised of my mind, my emotions, and my will. My mind, the way I think. My emotions, the way I feel. And my will, the way I make decisions. And so for me, and a lot of this, uh, I'm going to actually share with you an excerpt from my book, Level Up Your Life. A lot of this is in the book as well. For you to level up your life, you have to level up your soul. <laughs> soul prosperity. You will never experience life prosperity that will exceed your soul prosperity. You will never experience something on the outside until you're ready for it on the inside. So your soul, the way you think and feel, make decisions, it determines how you see yourself. 
It determines how you see God. It determines how you see life, how you see others. It determines what you think you can do or what you think you can't do. And your outlook will impact your outcome, right? So as a believer, Proverbs 23 and 7, as a believer, the Bible says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. As a man thinks in his soul, so is he. So who do you think you are? Well, if you ask me that question, I'd be like, I'm glad you asked. Let me tell you, right? But who do you think, whoever you think you are, whoever you think you're not, either way, you're right, because you will never get beyond who you think you are. You will experience in life what you experience in your soul. So in 3 John 2, the Bible says, beloved, this is from the Amplified, I pray that you may prosper in every way and that your body may keep well. That's like being healthy as well, even as your soul keeps well and your soul prospers. The traditional version says, I wish that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. So for you to experience prosperity in life and also prosperity like health wise, then it's going to happen as your soul prospers and you will never experience life prosperity beyond your soul prosperity, right? And so, so you have to prosper in your soul. If you don't change the way you think, if you don't change the way you feel, if you don't change the way you make decisions, you're never going to experience the life that God wants you to have. So right thinking is actually what produces right living. So divine success happens on the inside, say amen to that, right? So the measure of success that you will experience in life begins with the measure of success that you experience in your soul. Now, I'm going to read to you some things from my book, Level Up Your Life. And so from Level Up Your Life, uh, here's a couple of things. This is a quick excerpt. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but for those that are on the Patreon, you're going to get all, all the notes. So I wrote, to maximize your divine purpose and potential in life, to become the man or woman that God has called you to be, you must see yourself as that person first, which is why you got to develop a prosperous soul. So in the kingdom, it, you got to see it to be it. If you can't see it, you can't have it, right? Because you don't, you don't, you have to see it first. It has to become real to you on the inside first before it will manifest on the outside. I keep reading. The prosperous soul believes in God's limitless dreams and relies on God's limitless power. It is God's ability to accomplish the seemingly impossible that will propel you beyond the limits of your humanity. Humanity is limited at best. You cannot accomplish God's will for your life based solely upon your power, your ability, your strength. So don't fool yourself into thinking that you are succeeding on your own. Many times believers get confused thinking they are accomplishing things without the grace of God Grace can be described as God adding his super to your natural, causing the supernatural to occur in your life. James said, every good and perfect gift comes from God. So make it a habit to acknowledge God's blessing and thank God for his grace. And then I go on to say, let me just, and then I'll wrap this up. The prosperous soul, I wrote, loves God, not money. The prosperous soul gives God first place in your life, and then he will see to it, God will see to it that you receive all the resources that you need to accomplish whatever you need to accomplish on this planet, right? So Paul warned, this is 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 9 and 10 from the New Living Translation, but people who long to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many foolish and harmful desires that plunge them into ruin and destruction for the love of money, not money, money is not evil, it's the love of money is the root of all sorts of evil. And some people craving money have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows. He went on to say, because there's nothing wrong with money, 1 Timothy 6, 17 and 18, teach those who are rich in this world just not to be proud, not to trust in their money because money is unreliable. They should trust in God who richly gives us all things for our enjoyment. Tell them to use their money to do good. I talk about funding kingdom projects all, uh, all around the world all the time. They should be rich in good works and generous to those in need, always be ready, being ready to share with others. So the Bible doesn't say money's bad. The Bible doesn't say you shouldn't have money. The Bible says when you have it, you shouldn't trust in it because money is unreliable. God is reliable. And then you should use it to be a blessing and you should be rich in good works, sowing into kingdom projects all around the world 
And then we do need money to do things down here. Solomon said in Ecclesiastes 10 and 19, money answers all things. So as I wrap this up about soul prosperity, let me come back to your soul. When you have a prosperous soul, you think, you feel, and you make decisions like God. Like when you when your thinking is not lining up with God's thinking, and the Bible contains the character, the attributes, and the nature of God. So the Bible, the, the whole point of reading the word of God is to get to know the God of the word. So when you're reading the word of God, it's teaching you how God thinks. It's teaching you how God feels. You should feel how God feels about things, right? God hates sin. He loves the sinner, but he hates sin. So it's okay for us to hate sin. It's okay for us to hate things that happen down here in this world. When, when somebody shoots up a school, ugh, we should hate that because God hates that, right? When, when the, so, so we should feel about things the way God feels about things. We should think about things the way God thinks about it. We should make decisions about things the way God will make a decision. What, what will God do in this situation, right? And so we're lining ourselves up in our soul with the way we think and feel and make decisions like God. When you have a prosperous soul, see, then at that point, you begin to see yourself the way God sees you. You begin to believe what God believes about you. Remember, if you can't see it, you can't have it. You have to see it to be it. And since your spirit was saved, past tense or changed instantly, and your body will be saved or changed eventually, the only, your singular focus right now, look at me, for the rest of your life, your focus should be on the salvation of your soul, meaning your, your soul is being changed to think and act and make decisions like God. So when you align yourself with God on the inside. It's only a matter of time before you experience that on the outside. But if you don't have it on the inside, you're not going to have it on the outside because you're not ready. As I close, let me tell you, once you get ready though, once, once the Holy Spirit says, oh, you're ready. Once you're ready on the inside for whatever it is, once you're ready, then get ready because it's only a matter of time. This is the importance of having a prosperous so I pray that this was a blessing to you. Once again, if you're not part of our Patreon, go to patreon.com forward slash Rick Pina. I'm going to provide all the notes there and we provide a lot of other content like this. Have an amazing Sunday. God bless you.